Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Instagram Live. Today we have record producer Rogers Masson, produce Day of Fire, Vintage Trouble, Marilyn Manson, uh, Frank Palangi. <laughs> About 10 years ago now. What's going <laughs> yeah. on, man? How you doing? I'm doing great, Frank. Thanks for having me on here, man. I really appreciate it. No problem. How's that? Uh, you still in Tennessee right now or? Uh, no, I moved actually to Asheville, North Carolina, just uh, just uh -huh. in November. Try to get a get a little bit of a reset and back to the mountains. It's actually close to where I uh, where I grew up, so um, uh, it's been kind of a nice nice uh, change of pace. I've been in you know music uh, music cities for for gosh like twenty years now, so it's nice to yeah. kind of get out. Is it? Yeah. Um, I, I was actually looking down there to. As far as moving, Excuse as you know, like little uh, North Carolina, you said North Carolina. There's yeah. a there's an edge of Tennessee too on that side. I was looking. That's pretty. Yeah, that's right where side. I am. <laughs> that's right where I am. I'm probably um, just an hour to two hours. Uh, sorry, about an hour from the border and about two hours from Knoxville. So it's in the, oh, the, okay. the complete western part of North Carolina in the mountains. Nice. So it's, it's that's, nice. That's probably man. exactly quiet. where I wanted to move, right next door to you. Yeah, it's beautiful. And Asheville's <laughs> got it's there's actually a really good music scene here. And and one of my favorite studios on the planet is here called Echo Mountain Studios. And um it's in an old uh old church that they converted. And I, it's actually where we recorded some of the uh some of the stuff for the Day of Fire record. We did a bunch of songwriting oh, okay. there, came through there on a tour when they were touring with uh with Chris and um so yeah, it was yeah, it was a great place. That was the first time that I worked there, and then and then we did uh, some of the some of the vocals and some of the mix in there actually. So that was what year was that? Was that two thousand seven that you were talking about? Two thousand eight and two thousand nine. Okay, I think it came out in February of two thousand nine. Everybody doesn't know Day of Fire Christian rock band. Josh was in Full Double Jacket, and uh, we got to work with him on my first EP. Um, That's right. That's right. Actually, one of the I, one of the baddest, most killer. Uh, rhythm sections absolutely anywhere is yeah. is uh yeah chris and joe pangallo and zach sims on drums and and just unbelievable rhythm section of course josh brown grammy nominated yep. band and and a uh, dove award winning band and just unreal and that's the band that we used for actually for frank's record for your record and and uh josh came in to help out with vocals and and all that kind of stuff it was great that was a great session man that yeah, that was, uh, we'll get into that a little later. Here. Yeah. All right. But so um, let's start out with Marilyn Manson. And then eventually this vintage trouble was after me. I know that after the, yeah, after yep. that, that's right. So let's, let's go to back to beginning, let's say. So what was, what was the first artist you've ever produced? Uh, let me see. The first one was a guy named Phil Cody. I was actually the guitar player in his band and okay. was living in, uh, was living in Santa Barbara, California, uh, shortly after I got out of the army, actually, and was in his band. And we recorded this thing in his garage. And it was kind of an acoustic uh, kind of deal. He was a big fan of, of Dylan and, and uh, some other artists like that. Uh, Springsteen, that kind of stuff. And just a great songwriter, just okay. fantastic songwriter. He was out of Cincinnati, Ohio, I think, and um, originally, but uh, we met there. We ended up recording this record and and it got interest from Interscope and he ended up moving to Los Angeles and uh, essentially uh, canon the whole band. <laughs> he dropped the whole group, <laughs> which was probably the best the best decision that he that he could have made. But uh, so he ended up going on to make a record, a really great record uh, with a group that was called the Sons of Intemperance Offering at the time, and, and they okay. became the Wallflowers, actually. So oh, he made this yeah. great, just, yeah, he, he made this fantastic record, and, and um, but I wasn't a part of that. But the, the, the demo that we did, uh, you know, got him the interest at Interscope, and, and I think got him signed, because, I mean, he was just great. And that was yeah. the first thing that I really, uh, you know, was putting up, setting up microphones and, and uh, helping out with decision-making process on, on what elements to use and, and arrangements and all that kind of Tones stuff. Tones and all that too. Yeah. And I realized through that, I mean, it was a little painful. My ego took a big hit, but you know, the ego, <laughs> yeah. the ego should be the first thing to fall, yeah. especially in this industry. Yeah. Uh, well, especially um, playing guitar in the band as well. Well, yeah. And I, I realized, uh, you know, I'm a solid guitar player, but I realized that I could join a band and try to do, I mean, it really hit me one day that I could, you know, join a band and, and try to make it with one band, or I could work with a bunch of different bands and, and, um, and go on the producer side of it and, and the mixing side of it, which, 
which I really, that was the thing that I loved the most. I mean, I love playing live, but I, what I love more is working with songwriters and, and being in the studio and the, the building process of, of putting music together. And, yeah. and that's really, I, it really taught me a great lesson and, and set me off on a, on a journey, you know, that, that uh, kind of punch in the gut of getting fired um, uh, was, was really one of the best things that happened to me as far as my career, because it, it set me off in, in, a, in a different direction that, that I'm really thankful for at, at this point. And um, so it was, a, it was a great, great lesson learned, if you will. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> yeah, led definitely. to many different projects, you know? Yeah, you. I did. And, and, and I have such a, I have a crazy eclectic taste in music. So I love, um, sorry about that, just kick the cord. I love everything from, <laughs> you know, jazz to classical to, you know, rock and roll is really, really my main yeah. thing. But man, I mean, you know, I will go on these, you know, drives my, my friends crazy, but I'll go on these week long benders into, you know, from Rage Against the Machine over to, you know, Oscar Peterson to, uh, you know, <laughs> Tchaikovsky or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to Day of Fire, to Frank Palangi, yeah. you know, I listen, to, I listen to everything. <laughs> but I, I do, man, I, I really I love a lot of different That's kinds cool. of music. And this, this has afforded me the ability to work with a bunch of different kinds of artists and in, in, in a bunch of, you know, different countries and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's been a, it's been quite a ride so far. I remember when, uh, so we met Day of Fire. I gave him a demo CD. He gave him, gave that CD, I think to you. Or when was you. that? This was 10 years ago. This was 2010. Okay. Um, yeah. he, they were playing the last stop of what soon to be their tour before they got dropped. They had one more show and mine was like the, the show before. And um, I remember you were out of the country still working on something. And then in between yeah. you were going back and forth, I think Holland or Denmark or something. I was in like Denmark. That. Yeah, yeah. I was actually in Denmark. And, um, and I remember receiving an email from Josh about you. And I mean, just to be clear to back up a second, they didn't get dropped. They, okay. Uh, okay. yeah, the record label that they were on uh, stopped in the middle of them being on the road, stopped uh, supporting their tour just oh, okay. the yeah, money wow. just stopped. Yeah. So this wasn't the, you know, this wasn't the, um, the fault of the band or any kind of thing like that. It was just a classic industry situation where uh, they were promised a certain thing and, and that promise fell through as many do. And, and uh, you know, it's, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't do any good to point any fingers, but it was not the fault of the band. And yeah. Cause they were opening for non-point. I remember. Uh, I think they were on that yeah. tour. Yeah. On yeah. The, the losing all tour. I think they were. Yeah. Yep. And then they toured with Chris Daughtry. It's funny. Every, right. Everything I always say, everything goes back to day of fire. <laughs> I, <had> to, <laughs> I worked some with kind two of guys from Daughtry so far. Yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> like, tell you, man, that, that uh, I was on the road with them. We were writing some of the record and, and uh, doing some of the arrangements and stuff when we were out on, when they were out on the road with, uh, with Daughtry, with, with Chris and, and the band and, and um, you know, what a, what a great guy, man. I got to yeah. tell you, there, there is an example of somebody in this industry that follows through and does what he says he's going to do. And, and he really did a lot for, uh, to help day of fire out. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, forever a huge fan of Chris's yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, just for the fact that he's a stand up guy and, and of course a just, you know, phenomenal singer, but, but more than that, just a really good person. And his, you know, his band is, is great as well of course and you know some of those guys too and oh yeah they're all oh, just yeah. yeah they're all just just great people but but um yeah so you know i didn't mean to i don't want to like you know diverge from what we were talking about but i right. just want to be clear about that kind of you know that kind of stuff i think is really important and and it's important to be clear about about things that happen and and you know i always say that the um, I'll watch my language but you know the artist is the first one to get crapped on and the last one to get paid yeah. and i think it's a real yeah. shame yeah, I think it's a real it shame in this industry and, and uh, you know, hopefully those things will change with, with all that's happened. I, I think so. Even yeah. over COVID, I go, you know what? The motto in the motto has to change. Nice. You know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's, we get the back end of the stick on everything. And I mean, I, I, I understand it to a point, but it's uh, it, it has to change even the way that. They're well, treated, I, yeah. You know? I think that, you know, those things like, um, that's the kind of stuff that artists should use as, as should turn that into um, motivation. Feel, you know, yeah. you turn a loss and you turn, uh, you know, getting beat down into a motivation. And, and, and that's how, you know, the artist still has to be the person that, that is the, uh, you know, when you're at the precipice of do I move forward or do I not, 
because I've been, you know, kicked down eight ways a Sunday, um, yeah. then, uh, or six ways a Sunday, I think as Karen goes. But <laughs> anyway, like uh, I think you have to harness that, harness those losses and, and turn it into motivation to, to, you know, go after the, what you really believe in. And, and, um, you know, this, it's a hard industry and, oh, yeah. and that's okay. You know, that's not a bad thing, but the focus should be on how can I move forward? Not who has, who has done me wrong. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Don't so, hold it against people kind of move. Yeah. On. I, I think that that's really important, man, because it, it's, you know, a lot of times the, the people that don't follow through it's, it's may not be their fault or it may be, you know, maybe they wanted to, but it turns out that they couldn't because of other circumstances, especially at, at companies and stuff yeah, like that, other be it record labels involved. or whatever. Yeah, 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 man, there's always humans in, involved and, and there are, there are also a lot of really good people in this industry and, and the change has to come from the artists that yeah. the, the artist has to be the, you know, the, the igniter and all of that. But nowadays the AI is involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Believe it or you not. Know, man, yeah, man. Uh, it's just, you know, there's scary. always going to be, there's always going to be challenges and, and, you know, the key is to, is to uh, just focus on yourself and not, you know, again, just not, you know, not who's doing better than you or not who's, you yeah. know, not who's trying to beat yeah. you down because uh, in the end, it's just, it's the, it's the music that matters. And, and that's what, that's what always matters. None of us would be around if there weren't artists, none of us would be around if there weren't songwriters and, and musicians yeah. and, yep. And yeah. um, I've been fortunate to work with, with, you know, some, some, you know, some of the best out there and, and many of whom no one's ever heard of, but there are just, you know, outrageously good musicians and, and artists out there and it, none of us would be around without that. And so, you yeah. know, you just have to keep plugging, you just have to keep pushing forward and, and the more you can focus on the positive side of things and, and you know, the better. Yeah, I think there has to be levels, you know, you have the people that play the bars and the restaurants, then you have, I call them mid-level, you know, you have something in between indie and, and touring and that sort of stuff. Then you have your indie and your national artists and things. We all have our stages because if you look at concert venues, restaurants, bars, all that stuff works, you know, uh, not all national bands and stuff can play, you know, Joe's barbecue, you know, that sort of thing. So it's, it keeps every, all of us in business, put it that way. It's kind of like a wheel. Well, sure, I man. Think. I, I think a real important thing in that is that is, is the realization that, that your record to you, the next record that you put out, the next song you put out is just as important as the next record is to Mick Jagger or, yeah. you know, yeah. or, or, who, or Chris Daughtry or anybody the else, you know, one or something. that's right. It's, yeah. it's, uh, and I think that that level of, of respect and, and, um, that kind of continuity, I think would do, would do everyone good to remember that, you know, that, that guitar player that's playing at the barbecue, you know, his instrument and, and what he's doing is just as important to him as, as, you know, any huge national act is to them. So, yeah. Yep. I think that's what that that's missed sometimes. And that's, you know, that's what's important. Your music's just as important as my music, just as important as, as anybody else, you know, to, yep. to you. And, yeah. Yeah. and I think that wherever you are, you know, I, I have found having worked with a lot of independent artists and stuff, I have found that, you know, one way to keep this, this kind of positive thing going and this idea of, of continuing to move forward and focusing on on your music and and not what other people are doing necessarily or not what technology is out there to you know put up a roadblock is yeah, this yeah. idea of a of a uh, movable movable definition of success yeah and and what I mean by that is like yeah for at first it could be playing at Joe's barbecue and then that's a success. And, you know, by next year, I want to be playing at you Bill's barbecue way. because it's twice as big and so on and so forth. And I yeah. think if you can, I think if you continue to have that and strive for the next step instead of the huge leap, mm -hmm. that you can continue to have a, a very happy and very successful career that continues to grow. And, and otherwise, you're going to be miserable if you're, you know, yeah. trying to get. I would have stopped years ago. I would have stopped probably. Yeah, man, if you're trying to get on the tour bus or trying to get, and yeah. that's great for for an overall goal. I'm not saying not to have that, oh, yeah. those kind of things to reach a national audience or an international audience. I think yeah. that, that is, you know, you know, that is a great dream to have and to shoot for. But along the way, you have to be realistic and you have to have those small steps. You know, there's, there's the saying that you want to try to get 1% better every day. And that's yeah, just a little step yeah. every day, man. And, yeah. and I think that those things kind of, 
you know, those things definitely matter. Yeah. Yeah. So what's this new video series? Uh, just one thing. Yeah. I'm starting a new video series and I I've been doing a lot of thinking over the last, uh, really the last year, year and a half. And, and, uh, but especially since, since the, the COVID stuff hit, how can I give back? What can I give back to artists and, and engineers and, and producers, you know, that are, uh, making their way up in the industry. You know, it's an industry that seems to be, uh, traditionally very close to the vest. I make a record yeah. that does well, and then I'm not going to tell anybody about it, about what I did or what I used or what compressor oh, I used. Yeah, or maybe yeah. if I do in a you know in an interview or whatever, I'm going to hold back some stuff because I don't yeah, want exactly. anybody to know my secret sauce or whatever. Yeah. And I truly believe that if I tell you, you know, you're doing engineering, you're doing recording. I mean, you got your setup right there. I can see that. Yeah. And if I help you make a record that does well, it takes nothing away from me. Yeah, but it, it adds to the industry. Right. So if I help uh, someone who is on their way up or trying to make it to the next level or whatever you want to call it, and and uh, they use some, you know, who knows what something that I said or somebody else said, yeah. or, or I give them the templates that I use, whatever it is, and it helps them make a great record. That's great for everybody. That's great for the industry. Yeah. And it takes absolutely nothing away from me. And and that seems to be lost in this industry. I, I, I've had many occasions when I was coming up asking, you know, uh, because I, I just wasn't smart enough to keep my mouth shut, like, oh, how did you record that? Or how did you do this? And, you know, shoo yeah. away a kid or whatever. And um, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's hard to shoo me away. So I started thinking about that. And, and it's really, for example, if you could buy just one microphone, what would it be? And, and that's yeah. what started it and, at a certain budget level, all that. All yeah, the yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's obviously there's not just one thing to do, but there's many levels to it, but I'm going to dig down in those levels. So if you okay. bought, if you could buy just one, you know, quality microphone, what would that be? And you only had a hundred dollars to spend, you know, for example, yeah. and then I'll go to the next level. If you could buy just one condenser, just one ribbon mic, that kind Is of thing. So because of op- <laughs> I'm, I'm a 57 fan. Man. Okay. And, and, you know, I have heard records done completely with 57s and vocals done with 57s that will blow your mind. Okay. That just unbelievable. Yeah. Like, wow, I can't believe that was done with a 57. Yeah. And, um, but keep in mind folks too. A lot of people, they mod those microphones or oh, yeah. the age I, matters. Like I have one that's 20 sure. years old and it's different than the ones they make now. Right. They, where they've taken out the transformers yeah. or, or done those kind of things. And I've done mods like that or bought ones with mods and you can do all. Of, and that's the thing that, that then the next video would be, what can you do with this microphone to yeah, mod it? You like know, in the next video, what's I'd the one thing you can do with the 57 to mod it or whatever. And so that's the idea. So I'm covering, you know, starting out with microphones, uh, but we're going to cover songwriting. We're going to cover mixing, going to cover, yeah. um, you know, mastering everything that you could possibly imagine. Are you going to do a little history. analog to how it's changed? Yeah, absolutely. To, okay. Absolutely. And why, why I think analog is important, which would surprise some people anyway. And, and um, uh, so I think that, I think that it's important to share information and, um, you know, it's the only way that we can learn. I mean, that's how we learn guitar. That's how we learn piano. That's how we learn songwriting yeah, is, to, yeah. it is, is through imitation and through, through our influence. Do you, do you think age has a certain element to do with that as far as, um, like, I always feel like um, you take some of the great producers maybe that mm-hmm. you, you grew up with and stuff like that. And you'd be like, only if I could learn from them before they had you know passed away or something say they never taught anybody to me like what you're saying here is um it's it's a travesty because it's all that kind of goes away with the person and nobody nobody knows why not share it you know yeah yeah Yeah. i i think that i think that's part of it i mean something that my something my dad told me when i was a kid um when I was in just going into high school was that the, the secret to, um, to knowing what's going on, right. Yeah. Is to yeah. g- become friends with the cook and the secretary, the administrative <laughs> assistant, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, because they know everything that's going on. And, and my, you know, my dad spent 23 years in the Navy on, on submarines and, and he, you know, he always learned from the, the younger sailors that were coming up because they had new ideas and they had new, you know, new ways of, of approaching things either through what they had learned in, in school yep. 
or or just through experience. And so I think you have to be open to that. I I have learned way more about Pro Tools from interns than I ever did on my own. I've been using Pro Tools since it was a four track, since it was a, the oh, 442, oh I think was the first. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was the first time. Do you that still use Logic out. too? Since, I know you use uh, Logic. 90, this was ninety three or nineteen ninety four, something like that. Oh, okay. When I started with with uh, with Pro Tools, and and so you know, there's there's no way that you can learn everything, and and you know, a a an intern that's you know 17 18 19 20 however they're old they are it doesn't really matter but yeah. they're way more accustomed to computers than than and know more stuff about you know quick keys or the latest stuff that's that's happening and i've always been a fan um of of asking them questions or if they have an idea uh or hey what quick keys do you know or hop on here and yeah, do some editing and let me see what out. you're doing yeah man i learned so much from them and given Giving somebody like that a shot to do stuff, I think, is really, really important. I just talked with my my buddy Big Joe Warlick, um, who's worked with like Dr. Dre and a bunch of artists like that. Just phenomenal engineer, um, and and he and I got into an almost two hour conversation the other day. And and part of it was was, you know, you have to be humble and and this idea of humility. And I have yeah, always been one. Too. Yeah, man. Every time yeah. I go into a recording session to this day, if we're working on a big console an SSL or Neve or whatever, after the session's over, you know, at the end of the session, um, either that day or, or a month after we've been in there, whatever, I zero out the board. I help the interns zero out the board in, or the yeah. assistant engineer or whatever. It's, you know, I help take out the trash. I help do it because yeah. you learn a lot while you're doing that stuff. You actually well, yeah, learn a there's, lot. There's a little extra you where, talk, you know, absolutely, than, than just, uh, you know, that's right man i'm no i'm no better than you and and yeah. uh you know i see you as a peer even though you're brand new and new to the industry and i think that that humility is so important for all of us to to keep in yeah. mind and and there you everyone's got a story and you have no idea what this what this you know 20 year old might know that yeah. you don't yeah yeah you know especially yep. considering how much recordings going on now on, on laptops and stuff like that you know there's so much to learn and 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 I love, you know, I love learning. I love sharing. I love going to colleges and speaking at, at uh, universities and stuff about sound and recording and music and all of that stuff. I've done, done quite a bit of that. I, I love doing it and will continue to do it. So do you, do you I, think, I think uh, more of it comes from a, from a humility, it, this idea of, of being humble about yeah. what you're doing. Do you, do you think that the, the kids nowadays are more into the mixing side of things or like how has producing to you has changed over the years? The term has kind of changed a lot. Sure. I think that uh, I, I really believe with, again, with the technology that, that you have to be able to, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades yeah. or you don't have to, it helps, let's yeah. say. Yeah. And so um, I think that because of that, it has, like I see it as a, as a great thing. Like you have all these tools at your disposal, you have distribution at your disposal. And so it's up to you to write a great song. And, and if you want to produce it and you want to mix it and record it, excuse me. Yeah. Then, then, um, you know, I see that as, as where, um, you know, Billy in his, in his garage or, or, you know, Frank in, in his setup is going to, is going to come out with some new ideas because they haven't had, they haven't had the same, the opportunity to work with a producer like me, for example, um, or yeah. anybody else. And because of that, they're going to come up with different ways to do things that are going to be unique and sometimes going to be really special and, you know, and, and uh, different than what I would have done or somebody else would have done. And, and I think yeah. that's what, it could I be think like, that's you, the beauty you did what, you know, with what, because yeah, of man, like you I were saying the what they have. Yeah. yeah. My favorite thing is using different instruments to like using a guitar to create a cello part or using a cello to create a vocal part or whatever. Yeah. And, and um, you, you know, obviously can do many of those kind of things with some of the technology or with a lot of the technology that's, that's out. And I think that's, what's great, man, through, through like, exploring, making mistakes, uh, trying it again, you know, coming up with crazy ideas and, and of course, happy accidents, which happen in those kind of situations. So I, I think that that's some of the, I, I just see it as such a great time for artists and, and maybe the best time in history to make music because you have the power yourself to do everything that you need to do. Yeah. yeah. So you got your website out there. People can contact you now. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I know it's back up, ready to go. Now, do you have, do you work out of your house a lot still, or do you go? Uh, Yeah, sure. I've kind of always done that. I've, I've always had a setup, um, at, at like a residential setup and, and would usually go in to record drums and, and full band kind of stuff, just like we did with your project in a, in a larger studio, then bring it in, um, you know, bring it into my own space to do. You were living, I remember, on top of Verizon or something like That's that. That's right. Yeah, I had a flat go, in Nashville. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go, are they going to hear this downstairs or what? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it was great because it. it, yeah, it was great because it was in a business district. And, you know, after five o'clock, it, it yeah, I recorded drums and all kinds of stuff in there. But wow. I still, you know, I still think it's important. The studios are, you know, they're still important, very much so. And, and, being in a in a great acoustic space and, and a historical place as well, yes. all of those kind of things there's are an energy to it. When you walk I mean, in there, really you is, feel like uh, oh, I got to be ready. I yeah, got to be on my of, game. You know, there's or, a sense of purpose. That's right. There's yeah. a sense. Of, I don't know if it's history or it's kind of like the same feeling you go when you walk into a cemetery. To be, be honest, maybe it's, so, it's man. History, you know. Yeah, maybe so. I think that you know we're here to make music and we're here to you know get something done and. And, uh, you know, like going to a restaurant, we're here to eat. And, yeah. and uh, I think that, you know, going into Let's the studio still has, still has a magic to it. And I think it still matters. And, yeah. and the same thing for mastering and all that kind of stuff to be in an acoustically pure space or acoustically sound space that's been designed yeah. well and everything is, it makes a difference, but you can do it. Absolutely. You can do it all at home and without a doubt. And, and uh, there's been so many records that have for, for quite a while, not just recently, but for quite a while where so much of it's been done in a home setting. And, uh, and I've always done that. I mean, to answer your question, yeah, I, I have a home set up and, and um, uh, the record I did in, in Switzerland, uh, which is the most recent one I've done, um, uh, like full with a full band. Well, no, there was, well, anyway, the, that, I did that one in a studio over in Switzerland and then brought it back to mix it and edit oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but there was another one, uh, uh, that I did at Warner Brothers in Nashville, uh, which was actually the most recent one. But uh, I did that in in with a full band and just, you know, with session players. And it was just, yep. it was magical to be able to go in there for a couple days and, yeah. and you Classic. know, come out with, yeah, come out with stuff that just sounds, you know, it's, it's really a treat. Like, I feel very fortunate to be able to do that kind of so thing. How, well. how'd you get hooked up with Vintage Trouble? Everybody does, maybe in the U.S. they don't know as much, but they're from overseas, Right? Uh, or, well, no, they, they, they were. they're from Los Angeles. They're, they're oh, actually okay. from LA, but they've had a lot of hit. Most of their success has been in England, Japan, you know, like overseas and everything. Yeah, and they, yeah. and they've, they've had success here. They toured with, uh, the who I think on their, uh, on their tour of like, I think when they did Tommy, the tour with ACDC. Yeah. Um, yeah. I remember I seeing the music video national. and you're like, yeah, I, I, I produced that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So it's uh yeah i got a there was a guy in nashville um uh a buddy named roger nichols that that called me up or or texted me like hey i've got this project that i can't do would you be interested in it yeah yeah and uh about 20 seconds after listening to like the first 20 (laughs) seconds of it i was like yeah i'll do that this would be amazing it was a mix uh that i did for him originally and uh, uh did that at my place the same place that we work that you and i work together Yep. Um, and, uh, and then after that, that led to actually producing a record with them and mixing that one. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's how, that's how I got hooked up with them was just a, a phone call essentially. And, and I ended up, uh, they, you know, they didn't have, uh, like most artists, they didn't have much money to do it and, and ended up uh, sleeping on the singer's couch and they fed me and, and, you know, we <laughs> went into actually the drummer from stone temple pilots, we went into his studio in uh called the bomb shelter which was in los angeles he's since sold it but uh oh, okay. so we did it at his place which just i mean what a great what a great experience just absolutely phenomenal space and and yeah. uh yeah it was great man we got to you know i got to uh introduce the guys to to some you know some of the companies that i've been working with like sennheiser and, and warrior microphones gave us a bunch of microphones yeah yeah um, yeah you know, just that's so. always nice when the companies do that. Uh, shout out to Cat Audio here. They they've been hooking <laughs> me up with uh, some. some oh, cool nice. Stuff. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, yeah definitely. Headphones man. and mics and. Yeah, I'm. That's awesome. I think that kind of stuff is really important. It's important to support artists, and it's very important for artists to support the the companies that they that they like that they truly you know believe in and, yeah. and that kind of stuff. So I've been a big fan of Royer for a long you know just for a long time and and have worked with them. Uh, 
and you know, I, I love their stuff. I love their equipment and, and the guys are, are, are great there. So John Jennings is the, is the guy who runs that ship and, and John's been a good friend and, and, uh, you know, has always supported me and, and, um, you know, at times where there wasn't money to, to buy microphones and stuff, he's always been there for me to, you know, to help support me. So I, I'm just a huge fan of companies like that, that, that believe in music and believe in, in supporting artists. And I, you know, I called him up and, and, you know, Hey, I've got this project. These guys are, you know, just out of this world. Good. Um, and, you know, can you help out? And he, he was right there for me, man. Just unbelievable. Nice. So we ended up using a lot of, of Royer mics and, and other ones, of course, but, uh, yeah, you know, I've, just, heard, I've never used one, but I've heard they're really good. I've oh, never, man. I don't Guitars, think I've ever seen one in person either. New York. Yeah. New York high, really highly <laughs> recommend, highly recommend them, man. On guitars, the, the Royer, the, uh, 121 is, is kind of the main one that I've used, okay. but on guitars, vocals, you know, I mean, just everything they're, what do you really think of the AKG special. uh they say to use for it? So they have a special guitar mic. I forgot, I don't know the model. I've been a, but... you know, I've used the 414, I've used the 421, or not the 421, what is it, 451. Yeah, yeah. Um, the original 451s I, I've used a bunch in conjunction with uh like a like a Neumann or something like that, or 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 even a uh even a Royer, a 121 with a with a uh, AKG 451. That that microphone is one of my favorite, along with the AKG C12 for especially for female vocals and and like cello and stuff like okay. that overhead drums. What do you, yeah, what do you think of the well, I mean, we could talk about that. Them. What's they, that? They, they make tubes and preamps in mics and stuff now. What do you think of that? As far as sure, like, I mean, well, they've had sure. tubes and yeah, they've had tubes in them for for. I mean, they're kind of going back to yeah, you classic. know that thing that they've had for a long time. But but uh, there, man, there are such there's such great technology going on right now. And um, the session that I did with uh, with uh, this great singer just two weeks ago uh, named Don Borders. I've been calling her Don B. Uh, and my, <laughs> my buddy, uh, uh, Christopher Hollis, I call him CP Hollis. So CP and I did this, did this uh, uh, two or three, what do we do? Two songs, I think. And they, we just did it here in my living room. They came up from Atlanta and we ended up using um, uh, Stephen Slate stuff. We used uh, sl the Slate microphone system, the virtual okay. microphone system. And I got the large diaphragm one and the small one. And it's amazing. Like it, it, it's, it, you know, the emulation and all that kind of stuff that's going on is, is, is really, um, it really works for, especially for doing like residential kind of stuff or doing these kind of things. And, and yeah. uh, it's the only session I've done with it, but I'm, I'm really impressed with them. And I guess to, to kind of get to what you're, you were talking about, like it, there's so much technology uh, and a marrying of, of um, software and hardware that's come yep. together. Yeah. A yeah. lot of the stuff like that Euphonics was doing, I think Avid bought them yep. uh, quite a while back, but where there, there was uh, and Summit Audio originally was doing some of this stuff where, it was um, digitally controlled analog, right? Where they were digitally controlling the preamps, but they were analog preamps and everything. Yep. And um, I don't know all the numbers, the or the gadgets, the you know, the there's many more whiz bang oh, yeah. people that are smarter than me on I mean, that kind of guitars, stuff. There's guitars, there's drums, there's everything. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of great technology, and I, I man, I encourage people to to you know to to try it out, to get it, use it you know, yeah. uh, see if it works for you, take it back if it doesn't and try something yeah. else, you know, guitar yeah. center is great for that. I, I work I mean, with to GC emulate Pro. like a mic from the forties and fifties. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. Like that's, even, that's what the slate stuff is doing. And they're yeah. emulating, you know, yeah. some like a, you know, U 67s, it emulated yeah. Neumann's and, and they had a Sony 800 that that's what we ended up using. It just sounded my this advice I give everybody I mean, is, is not just to use just the digital stuff. I think kids get hooked in of, I got a mic, I'm just going to use the digital plugins and they never explore anything else. Well, explore it all, it, it, you know, exploring is a real important thing, man. And, and, and it, I think what's important in what you said is, is really don't let, um, don't let your, your wallet dictate exploration yeah. and yeah. trying stuff out. So yeah. if, if you can't afford a microphone uh, and I've been there, I know what that's like. And if you can't afford a microphone, and you're trying to record, then borrow one, find, yeah, you know, one yeah. of your buddies that's got one or, or Facebook right here, garage sales, right here know. is a microphone. And yeah. most people that are watching this probably have something your, like your this. your PS4 controller. <laughs> yeah, man. Like right here's a microphone. Yeah. There's a microphone in your, in your, uh, in your laptop. If you don't have yeah. a laptop, whatever you have, there's probably yeah. a microphone around, 
um, I ended up making a building this microphone out of a out of an old uh, phone receiver that I got for free, nice. and and um, uh, somebody was throwing away just an old like dial phone thing, and and my dad and I ended up building a microphone out of that, uh, just out of the speaker, you know, the part that you speak into. Yeah, um, I know um, Brandon from from Daughtry uses it on his drum set and, and like, as oh, part, cool. like a room mic, and it adds this mid range weird thing. It's cool. Yeah, man. It's, it's it's my point being don't let anything any obstacle, be it money or, or whatever, get in the yeah. way of, of yeah. uh, trying stuff out, trial and error and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and, um, and save you up know, your pennies folks. Too. Well, say, yeah, yeah, save up your yeah. pennies and try stuff out. I mean, I th- yeah. and, and dude, you know, rely on, you know, lean on your friends and, and, you know, if they need a mic, let them borrow one. And if you need a mic, you borrow one from them, that kind of thing. And, and I yeah. think that that's, that's how great relationships grow. And, and those things develop into relationships where, where you, you know, the next thing, you know, that friend of yours is now working at Neumann or Royer or whatever. Yeah. And, hey, I want to yeah. try out this and they'll send you a microphone. And, and it, it's, it's easy at this point, it sounds easy, you know, that, oh, I got a microphone from, you know, John Jennings at Royer helped me out. Well, that was, you know, after years of developing a relationship and, and yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. And I yeah. say that Doesn't very much overnight. from a place, yeah. I say that very much from a place that I understand what it's like not to have money to be able to buy something yeah. or to try something out. So please understand that, you know, I, I work, worked my way into those situations and, and, um, through, uh, you know, mistakes Every, and failures like and, that. And artists, all, you know, filmmakers, you, you all have steps and stuff out there. It's that's like, right. Um, and some of the best stuff comes from, from, yeah. you know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And I like, fully believe that. Like some people, they'll, they'll, I, I get some emails and they're like, dude, can you hook me up with, I don't know, like some company that I'm with or something. And I go, yeah, I go, I can, I, you know, you, I go, the stuff's out there. I go, you gotta, I just say, I go do your research. I go, but it's not, it's, you have to based off of your sound, your quality, your image, mm-hmm. your thing. There's a lot of factors that go into it. I yeah, think, I think um, there are, man. I think there absolutely are, you know, yeah, there's a lot and- of things that. That they can yeah, yeah. I, I, I think there are. I think it's just a matter of, of working into it. This like this project we did at, at Warner Brothers. Um, uh, the artist's name is Mikey Wayne. And, and uh, I've been working with him for five or six years now, right in and, and uh, just phenomenal artist. And, um, you know, through that process, I mean, we've met so many people and he's met so many people. And, and it's, it goes to this, this idea, like we didn't have a budget to go into, we did to go into record, but we didn't have a budget to, you know, really go in to do a lot of mixing. So yeah. we did most of it, you know, in, in a residential setting and then went in, it, this is just an example of how you can maximize your budget, you know, do most of it at home and then take it into a nice room, a nice mix room to, for a day or two or whatever. Yeah, to just reference. to tweak it. Yep. That's right. Terrific and do the yep. fine tuning and stuff. I do an analog it. transfer at the very end too. Sure. So th- besides mastering. Sure. Just in the mixing yeah. process. And I go, okay. Yeah, and then sure, I send man. that I mean, off. That works. That yeah, cool. that, that works really well. Mastering yeah. is still a very important thing as well. And, oh, yeah, and I, you know, save up your money and put it, you know, try to maximize your budget in, in the places that it really matters, you know? Yeah. So what's, uh, what's the future plans for you coming up here? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, pre co- or web- post COVID, I don't know. It's still yeah. COVID. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, uh, the website's going to launch um, here. Uh, by the time this airs, the website will be up, and that's uh, I'm sure we can put links in, but it's audreysound.com. Um, and, uh, you know, if it's cool with you, we'll put up some links with that on your. Yeah, menu. yeah, I'll send you uh, some links. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and uh, uh, so that's going to go up, and on there's really going to be kind of an aggregate for me, uh, a, a bit of a marketplace, if you will, where, where if you need a song mixed, or need a song mastered, uh, you, you know, you can go there and do it. Or if you want to do some songwriting together or whatever, we can do it through there. Yep. And that'll be the main point of contact. So that's, that's going to be, um, that's really kind of the biggest thing that's, that's going on right now is, is getting that uh, put together. I've, I've been working with a, a, just a great company called Fix8 Media, F-I-X-8 Media, and uh, definitely check them out if, if you need a website or, or ideas on SEO and that kind of stuff. This guy, uh, Josh, that runs the company, uh, Josh and Tina are the kind of the, the, the ones that swing the bats over there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, just, man, I've had the, the best experience with them. And 
they've been uh, just, you know, very patient with me and, and had a lot of great ideas thrown at me. And, and so I'm using a lot of their advice to, to put this up and, and do this. And, and, you know, definitely the online thing is not my, not my forte. I've, you know, I've spent a career in, in recording yeah. studios and, I remember and, um, 10 years ago when I was um, doing the stuff, <laughs> I was tagging you a lot. You go, dude, why are you tagging us? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> we don't yeah. like that. And I go, just wait, Rogers, just wait. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like it. I was just like, man, it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> but now uh, it's like, please, please do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are people, is that what people are saying? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Frank, the, the uh, you know, um, that's a, you know, it's just a, a, a part that just shows, you know, some of my ignorance on, on, um, you know, on social media and that kind of stuff. It's, it's, I try to focus. Yeah. Well, I mean, age on, difference too. I mean, oh, I grew, yeah, up, for sure, I grew but, up on it. But I know? think that's a, you know, I think that's an easy excuse. I think that it's really more towards, you know, choosing to focus. Mm-hmm. I've focused so much of my energy on songwriting and, mm-hmm. and, and the production side of it. And, and um, uh, in a, in a way just not paid attention to it and that's my own fault that's nobody else's fault that's just you know just haven't uh and i think it's important you know and has been really for the last 10 years to to you have to you have to be able to handle all of it you know you have to know every bit of it in order to be an independent contractor like we are as as artists and and producers and engineers and stuff so i think it's important thing to know and and um uh, you know, that's just based on my own, you know, my own, not unwillingness. And I don't think it has anything to do with age. I just think it has to do with stubbornness. You know, ah, it's something else I got to learn, <laughs> you know, yeah, something yeah. else I, I've got I tell to you, so. it's, uh, it's quite the time requirement nowadays. It, it, I, it I, is. I, I it I, but I think if now. you want to be in the game, you've got to, you know, 10 years ago, it was how to an kick option. The ball. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I think it's important. I'm glad that back then I, you know, I've actually, I mean, I learned a lot from you as far as, you know, here's an artist that's, that has got the hustle and, and that is so important. And it's such a, yeah. you're such a great example of the importance of, of hustling and getting yeah. out there and not quitting and, and keeping, you know, keep the drive moving forward and stuff. And, and, you know, there, people can learn a lot from you on that. Artists can learn a lot from you and producers as well. And, I and, you know, you're that. way better at that stuff than I am. And, and that goes back again, just goes back to the, you know, that idea of being humble about stuff. There's stuff that, that I don't know and I need to know. And, yeah, and de- yeah. definitely social media is one of them. And it's, again, I think it's an easy excuse to, to, Oh, I'm too old to, to learn this stuff. I think is, yeah. is you know, yeah. is not the best way to go about it. So. Yeah. That's where it's, it's cool to sharing in between things like social media, Yeah, man. And, I think and, so. I think it is. You know, I think it's really, I've, I've got, it's only the last five years. I've really gotten into the mixing stuff. I mean, I've always dabbled uh-huh. in it, but it, it was like, uh, I think it was 2014 or something. I started producing and mixing a lot more local artists. Now I've right. gotten into it even more, but cool. that's another thing I was going to ask you with the COVID stuff. Like with me, everything just died with it as far as in-person oh. stuff, you know? Right. I was having people over, we were doing things and, um, I'm like, okay, <laughs> mm-hmm. what do we do now? And actually yeah. they, they don't want to do it, uh, digitally as much, you know, they wanted to actually do it in person. Oh, you mean not, not do it remotely? Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah, because I some of them don't understand it as well. And, and, and I understand that too. You know what I mean? That yeah. Side of things. Well, that's an opportunity for you to learn, to share, yeah. I mean, to, to, uh, teach, you know, and to share what you do know. Yep. Uh, with people that you're working with. And man, I couldn't, I cannot encourage you enough to do that. I mean, it's so yeah. important, man. Just whatever you're doing, if they have a question, take time to answer it, man. Cause it, it's, it's, it will come back around to you, you know, helping, helping yeah. out and share just what we were talking about at the very beginning. Like, I think it's so important to, to share this knowledge and, in um, you know, and to help out. But I, I, it, it, changed of course like the in-person thing kind of took a hold but i have been almost i want to say since 2007 i have been always very interested in and very active in in seeking out projects all over the place yeah Um, not just in america not just in person but but anywhere that i could find something that i really believed in an artist that i really loved and like the band I worked with in, in Denmark um, called Lily Phone. And, and that man, yeah. uh, I, I think that 
you know, or I know for a fact, I mean, there's, you know, beautiful music everywhere you go. And, and I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of, of, uh, you know, producing a record or writing a song that, um, that inspires someone as much as I've been inspired by music that I love. And, and so I have since then, since the technology allowed for it, I have done remote, remote mixing, remote, uh, songwriting, that kind of stuff. Of course, it was harder in in uh you know 2007 2008 but it was more like okay here's an idea i'll email it to you yeah uh, more so yeah, than or Zoom or anything itself. is now like play on speaker yeah but I, i'm getting ready to, to mix a project with a band in uh ireland oh, okay uh, here uh hopefully next week we'll get started the week after that called sun machine and man these guys are great so <laughs> nice. uh uh so they're they're this really great band. And, and I had worked with uh, one of the guys was in another band that I worked with from Ireland uh, called the riot tapes. And, and we did it all remotely. And, yeah, and that was, that. I did the riot tape stuff years ago and, and we just did it all remotely and it, it worked out great. So I, I've been doing that for, well, I mean, for over 10 years now. And, yeah. and so the technology side of it, um, although I haven't been, you know, Johnny on the spot with the, with the social stuff, social media stuff, but the technology stuff, I, I've, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, neck deep in that since, uh, since the mid nineties and, yeah, yeah. and I've used it as much as I could in any way that I could to, you know, to help, uh, to help with the, you know, the projects I'm doing. So I, I, it hasn't been that much of a change, I guess, to answer your question, it hasn't been that big of a change for me. Yeah. The, the thing that's been the hardest is the lack of contact, the, the not being able to hug the person that, you know, that you're yeah. working with and yep. that kind of stuff. And, yep. and, um, yeah. uh, you know, that about me, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I think that those, it's very important to get close with the artists that you're working with and are writing songs with and stuff. And so that's yeah. been the hardest part for me is not to be in the same room when, when you have those opportunities and, um, working with Dawn and CP a couple of weeks ago, it was just a reminder of why I love music and the, the, you know, cause it's all, it, so much of it is about human interaction and, yeah. and, you yeah. know, and to, to, to have that connection, like, like CP and I, um, he did a bunch of the arrangement and, and uh, the actual, you know, playing of the music at his house in Atlanta, and then, and then sent the stuff up to me, you know, sent the files up to me, okay. and then, uh, you know, put a mix on it and, and did some arranging or whatever, but, but, uh, and then when Dawn came in, we just, you know, we set up a microphone and just went for it, and she had already rehearsed a bunch of the I stuff think I down seen, there. I think I've seen so, the pictures to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It, it, having that kind of thing, I think is is it, that was kind of a hybrid thing where we did remote. Uh, we did the whole thing remote until she came in and sang, and just yeah, yeah. yeah, man, just the reminder of that human interaction to be able to cook food together and and hang out yeah. and stuff was just yeah. man, it just you know really filled my soul with a bunch of joy, man. Because <laughs> it's you know that's the thing that I that I miss, yeah. you know, and I I, I love writing songs and, and being in the studio with great artists and, and, you know, trying to find, trying to hunt for those special moments. Yeah. And I, w- and, I um, wish we had this a couple of years ago, even, you know, back then, because it was, like you said, it was, it was really yeah. shaky, you know, through some of the, those uh, like being able to, to, yeah. to do Yeah. The, like the even when you're stuff. working the Denmark artists, all that kind of stuff, like it would have been a treat, you know? Oh to, yeah. I mean, to, we were doing Skype. I remember doing Skype man, and it was so rough. Like, oh, it was, my God. You know, it was very herky jerky, almost yeah. like the, the you films see you see all from the pixels in there. Yeah. <laughs> almost like the films from the twenties or, or whatever, you know, yeah, it's it Charlie cool. Chaplin. It looked almost like, yeah. like the technology was basically at that point. Jeez. So I, yeah, it's, it's, it's so, great that uh, it's gotten to this point. Fans out there, they, they know you guys from, from me. So we, we've, you know, we worked 10 years ago now. I can't believe, I, I think I sent a message to Josh cause he, uh, I got the American lion CD signed from him. Oh, cool. Right? And I told yeah. him, I go, you know, it's been 10 years. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, but they've, That's crazy. they've, um, they've always wanted me to have this sit down chat with you. And, uh, and I go someday, I go Who someday it will happen. Who has bunch, your, your fans? Bunch of fans. Oh, has. cool, yeah, man. Because I they know that. they love uh, they love those first couple songs and stuff like that. Oh, cool, they, man. That's, know, wow, that's that awesome. Kind of that's a, quite a compliment, man. I so really I go, you know, that. it's it's um it will happen. So my goal my goal is to take some of the behind the scenes footage, which is already online, mm-hmm. um, in bits, and maybe make almost like a mini you know half an hour hour long thing of what we did and, oh, and cool. throw in little 
little live stuff, little interviews, little back to scenes, you know, everything that we used to do. And then just kind yeah, of- Yeah, you did a bunch of that stuff. I remember your dad was, uh, your dad was filming quite yep. a bit and yep. which was great. What a good dude. And yeah. uh, that was such hi. a fun Both hang. Both my parents man. say hi. <laughs> yeah, cool, that's great, man. That Please tell them I said hi to you. That, yep. That's fantastic. That was such yep. a great hang. And, and, uh, I, I just, you know, I love that they, that you have that support and, and that they were there supporting you in that way, because it's, you know, a lot of people don't have that or, yeah, or don't have that yeah. opportunity. And it's so special that you do. Um, so yeah, man, that, I mean, that would be great, dude. I would love to work with you on that. We can get some, uh, That'd be cool. Uh, you know, some, some anecdotes. And stuff yeah. Like that. Yeah. I'd like to get just a few little clips like this of us talking sure. about certain songs. Oh yeah, or something. man. That was cool. such a great session. It just had such, you know, it was really a great time. And I think we worked at three different studios, if I remember correctly. Two. Yeah. So the, um, we did. Well, including my place, it was three actually. Three with yours. Yeah. It was, yeah. um, I'm waiting. It's all right. And we squeaked in remembrance and we did those sound stage in uh That's i think right. your place and then the second one I, it was some guy's house yeah we did a guy's house that he had, he had built like a full-on studio though. yeah the rickenbacker really nice. base i remember that i go that's i want right. to take that yeah. with me that <laughs> yeah, was awesome that thing was, that thing was great man. that was cool yeah that's that's and i encourage like any of your fans man if they you know want to reach out or whatever please do um, yeah anybody watching yeah. this tag them right now instagram yeah, facebook man. they'll be able yeah to, any anybody wants yeah. to reach out or you guys have have questions about production or any of that kind of stuff hit me up and yeah and, uh, you know I, I love to love to share information as i've as i've mentioned so and definitely continue to support frank and what he's got going <laughs> on the the, yeah. the the most hustling hustler out there in the industry man no plan b it's what i gotta say you know i don't know <laughs> yeah. it's it's a thing of um everyone's like like one guy was like when, when's it gonna be enough I go never. <laughs> Who said? What do you mean? Like that? You're you're gonna one of my stop old it? bosses. Yeah, it's like when when are you kind of gonna get the age of, you know, throwing it aside or something. And I go, I don't, man. I go, I'm, just, I'm, just, I go, I don't know if you understand. I go, I just feel so creative, whether it's music or movies. I I just have mm -hmm. to do it. I get moody if I don't. I come up with ideas, and I'm like, I'm trying to go to sleep, and all of a sudden, there's this idea that kicks in. That's yeah. how you know it, it bothers you, not the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 and, i think um, that's something that's really important man if it you know if you think you have something to say or feel that you have something to say you should say it be it uh as a, a painter or writer yeah a, an orator you know whatever it is and and the, you know life is fleeting man yeah. and and um it's when you have something creative and most people do most people have some some creative bone inside of them yeah and you yeah. have something creative it's it's important to express that even if you don't show it to anybody else or, or do anything with it. Yeah. It, it, um, it can bring you happiness. It can get the, the sadness or pain outside of you yep. in a way. Frustrations and, and all the emotions. That's right, man. And I, I think that it's really important in, um, you know, those that, and I'm not, you know, this isn't directed at your former boss or whatever, but those that, that, uh, you know, poke fun at it or, or, uh, try to try to, you know, hold you back from it, either verbally or physically or whatever. Yeah. You know, those are the people that you want to get away from because it, it's, it's, it, it, life is just so short man. it's yeah. so short. And you, you know, what I realize to, what, what they do is if, like you said, if you keep going, you're still doing it, they'll say eventually that, you know, he's still doing it. I give him credit. He's yeah. Cause people, it, people know? respect it. And a lot of times the ones that are, you know, my dad always said the loudest one in the room is the weakest. And I truly yeah. believe that. And then, yeah. you know, those that the are, mouth. those that are poking fun are generally those that, that should, you know, probably need to be doing the same thing themselves need to be looking inside and, and yeah. uh, holding up that, that accountability mirror, I like to call yeah. it, but, uh, but, you know, a lot of times there, there, there are, uh, and I'm, I'm not, you know, everybody's got their own struggle. And yep. I think that the important thing is there that a lot of times the, the person that's, that's questioning what you're doing, they, they really want to be doing it themselves. They want to find a way to do it themselves yeah. or find the courage yep. to do it themselves. And it doesn't make them uh, a coward for not doing it. It's just, they haven't found it yet. They haven't found the courage to do it yet. And, and I think that that's such an important thing to remember as an artist and yeah. of any kind um, is as you know, and, and, you know, we're talking about music here, but, uh, you know, as a songwriter or whatever that this man, don't listen to those voices, you know, at yeah. all. 
Don't Do listen to those thing. voices. Listen to the one that's inside of you that that you know that you have something to say or something to write or something to paint or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, there's many forms of art out there and, and, you know, from photography to whatever. And, and I think that, uh, you know, I think it's important to get it out and and you have the time to do it or find the time to do it, but it's, it is, it's really important. You know, I, I've, I've risked everything to do this and have, you know, ruined relationship or I, everybody makes fun of me the way I said, ruined <laughs> yeah, <laughs> relationships have, and I would this, say it's you know, the sacrifice <laughs> made many, many mistakes in, in, uh, uh, to, to get to this place that I'm, that I'm at now where, where I'm, I feel like I'm, you know, able to breathe a little bit and choose the projects and choose the people that I want to work with. And, um, uh, and I'm not saying to go about it that way because I, I made many mistakes to kind of, you know, figure it out and learn my way through this, yeah. but you know, to never, ever, ever quit. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Just never quit. And, um, you know, there's, there's responsible ways to do that and to, to still, be, you know, get your creative thing out there. And I would you yeah. know recommend doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, that's the thing, man, if you feel like you have something to say, then, then you need to say it, you need to get it out in whatever form that you can. Um, because it's, you never know what's going to happen or what you're going to lose uh, tomorrow. Yeah. So it's just really important, man. I, I'm not trying to get real heavy about it, but it's just no, it's right. it's so, it's so important, man. The fans love to, to hear this kind of stuff too. They, yeah, man, I encourage they, anybody, they like especially anybody that's just starting out that doesn't know how to play. Yeah. that wants to play but has That's no why idea these are more Man. sit down you know i don't like the cut and dry interviews you know stuff so we've yeah. had people from i've had people from american idol and the voice and, and oh, they've, cool. they've been talking about that sort of thing we just talk like this and it's amazing what the i don't want to say the truth but the reality comes in you know what i mean it's more down to earth it's not a you know i'm on a tv show interview thing you know what yeah I mean? wait i'm not this isn't gonna be on tv oh, wait damn. a second <laughs> <laughs> internet tv <laughs> i'm just messing with you man <laughs> yeah I, I think yeah man i i think that's just really important you know the the no matter your age no matter your experience no matter any of that no especially no matter what anybody around you is saying yeah if if you're not getting support then, you know, find a way to support yourself and, and find a way to learn, uh, you know, do your research, everybody research, research, research. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, yep. and if you can't afford a guitar, you can probably borrow one or you can, you know, there's probably some place, yeah. uh, be it a YMCA or a church or who knows what that you can, you know, a buddy that's got one that you can go and learn on. And even if you have to hide it from everybody that thinks you're an idiot for doing it, yeah, then go do it. Because it. uh, it's a it's something that will be with you, you know, or can be with you for the rest of your life, and and I highly encourage, um, you know, you to chase chase after those dreams, man, without a doubt. Even if it's just to learn, I just want to learn one song on the guitar. Awesome. Yeah. Go and do yeah, that. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Better Sandman, definitely. Metallica going on. Neil, we matched with the yeah, jeans shirts that. today, man. No way. Okay, <laughs> I love it. That's so cool, just man. Think alike. Yeah. Well, That's I appreciate so cool. you having on here. Uh, everyone will look forward to maybe some chats about the record and stuff. If I do that, uh, the whatever, whatever it's going to be called. Yeah, man, anything. just let me know. I would love to, I would love to help out on that in any way that I can. And, and, uh, yeah. you know, cool. I, I definitely want to give a shout out to, to, uh, I actually, I talked to Zach, um, oh, okay. Zach Sims, one of the best drummers on the planet. I talked to him, uh, the other day and we had a really great talk and, and, um, you know, sometimes I go in my own cave and, you know, I don't return phone calls and stuff because <laughs> yeah. I'm going through my own, you know, whatever yeah. it is. And, yep. and, uh, uh, like everybody does. And, and, um, I, I finally called Zach back and, and just had the, you know, the most beautiful conversation with him and, and, uh, it's kind of the same as, as talking with big Joe, it's just like this reminder of there, there are a network of people. We're all very, very similar and yeah. and yep. it's important to stay in touch with people and and uh i'm not always good at that but uh you know it'd be great to to uh you know have his involvement and the band's involvement the day of fire guys um they're just such you know such good people and 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 uh 
Zach, by the way, is is getting back into music. I've heard some tracks. Is he? Is he? Okay. Dude, All right. Look forward amazing. to that. It's so good. I mean, <laughs> he is so ridiculously nice. talented. So They're looking for a singer. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you know, he man, uh, I don't know if you know this, him. but he is a killer singer. Yeah, um, I, I heard his uh when we were in the studio, he played you his first thing with him singing oh, and playing man. drum. Method he is a something. I can't remember. Singer. Yeah. He was uh we were in Charlotte one time when we were touring with uh I say we when they were touring with Daughtry. Um they played in it was either Raleigh or Charlotte. I think they played at like NC State or I think that's where it was. It was at NC yeah. State. Yeah. And uh they got up and did a uh did a uh an STP song uh as a as a sound check. Uh, Chris and the guys did and Zach sat in on drums and sang like <laughs> yeah. harmonies and stuff and just killed it Rocked I mean it. just unbelievable talent he's such so talented so I, I'm excited for everybody to hear that I, I, I don't know what kind of uh, uh, you know what kind of distribution he's gonna like how far he's gonna put it out there or not yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, you know I certainly encourage him to do that but yeah I got to hear a little snippet and it was you know just so good that's so, sick. anyway yeah sorry all right man well i appreciate you coming on everybody tuning yeah. out there feel free to tag both of us we'll get your questions and comments out there yeah yeah please Check do out. i read all the i read all the comments and i'll i'll be sure to respond to every single one right. of them and frank i thank you so much and thank your fans for for taking the time to sit with us i i really appreciate it look forward to uh you know to seeing everybody on the on the socials all that good stuff. <laughs> Sounds yeah. good, man. Yeah. All right, All right guys. Brother. Hey, look forward to talking to you soon, man. All right. See you Keep guys later. Going, buddy.